Okay, today I want to talk about energy resources. Now, there are two types of energy resources. Uh, there are renewable and non-renewable energy resources. Renewable means that effectively the source of energy will never run out. Whereas non-renewable, it you know, uh, maybe it's a fuel, something you've got to burn. Eventually it's going to run out and it can't be replaced. So that's why it's called non-renewable. Okay, here are a list of the renewable and non-renewable energy resources you're meant to know. So hydroelectric, solar, wind, tidal, wave, geothermal and biogas. They're all examples of renewable energy resources, whereas coal, oil, gas and nuclear are non-renewable energy resources. Okay, we're going to start off with hydroelectric power stations. We're going to talk about their advantages and disadvantages. Well, firstly, one of the advantages, there's no fuel needed. They also don't release uh, any harmful gases. The disadvantages are they take up a large amount of space And some people who uh, live where the river used to be before it was dammed, they could lose their houses. Now this is a diagram of how the hydroelectric dam works. Well, there's gravitational potential energy here. The gravitational potential energy gets turned into kinetic energy as the water goes through. And where the water hits the turbine, the turbine spins around and this causes an gen electrical generator to spin around and that produces uh, electricity uh, leaving here. So you've got gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy as the water flows through and then at, here at the turbine that moves around which generates electricity at the generator. Okay, next up is solar. One of the advantages of solar is that it's, uh, there's no fuel needed. Also, like hydroelectricity, no harmful gases released. The disadvantages, solar, you have to have it in a warm climate uh, where there's a lot of sunshine, so. So you have to have a place that's uh, sunny. So they only work with sunshine and in cloudy conditions they, they become less efficient and also they only work during the day. Okay, next up we're talking about wind power. Now the advantages uh, of wind are again that no harmful gases are released and it doesn't need any fuel. The disadvantage is the wind doesn't blow all of the time. And also, some people don't like the way that they look. They think that they can spoil the environment. So this is how the wind turbine works. The wind blows and the wind's got kinetic energy. That causes the rotor blade here to turn around. Inside the, the nacelle there's a gearbox and then that changes the, uh, the ratio of the 
a turbine turning around here to something that the generator can use. And then finally the generator makes the electricity and it goes off to a transformer out towards the uh, uh, national, national grid. Okay, next up we're going to talk about Tidal. Now Tidal, it's quite similar to Hydroelectric, uh, but the disadvantage is it doesn't work all the time. Anyway, let's start off with advantage. So again, uh, no fuel is needed. And no harmful gases are released. Disadvantages doesn't work all of the time. And it also can be harmful to the environment. And what I mean by harmful to the environment, any uh, maybe fish that were migrating up and down the river, they might be blocked. So when these people design these uh, uh, tidal power stations, they've really got to be careful of what, uh, what uh, fish use the river because they could stop the uh, um, uh, movement up the river to spawn. Now this is a diagram of how it works. Uh, when the tide's coming in, the water goes through the turbine uh, and to go up the river. And just like hydroelectric, when the water's going through here, it will turn the turbine and turn the generator. And then after a while, this side will fill up here and this side will get lower and exactly the reverse process will happen when the tide is changing around in the other direction. Okay, now we're talking about waves. Now waves like the other renewable resources, uh, the no gas is released. And no fuel needed. The disadvantages of using wave power, uh, uh, it can uh, disrupt uh, fishing and shipping. And doesn't work all of the time, especially when the sea is flat. The wave power machine is anchored on the seabed here. As the wave comes along, it causes the machine to bend, and that bending motion is changed into electrical energy inside the machine. And next up we're talking about geothermal power. Now the advantages of geothermal, again, is non-polluting. Uh, the hot water produced can be used to heat people's houses. But the disadvantages of geothermal uh, uh, power resource are you, you can't use them everywhere. How geothermal energy works, underneath the ground here, uh, in the magma layer, you've got very, very hot rocks. Now, you pump water, cold water down through the rocks. As, they come, as it comes up, it comes up hot, and that hot water or steam is used to turn a turbine here that's used to generate electricity off here. So cold water goes down, hot water comes up. The... The hot water is coming up under a lot of pressure and a lot of steam comes up. That's used to drive a turbine in here. 
that generates electricity. Over here we've got the little cooling area, so the water's cooled down and back down it goes. Okay, next we're talking about biogas. Now, the advantages of biogas is that they, they take a product, so sometimes chicken waste, uh, chicken poo, uh, any kind of biodegradable matter, and they turn that into gas that can uh, drive a turbine. So the advantage is, is that it turns waste into a fuel. Now, one, of the, one disadvantage of this might be that there might be a limited supply of the material to burn. Coal, oil and gas. The advantages of coal, oil and gas is that they are uh, cheap, to run uh, and the fuel is cheap. Disadvantages they produce carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. Now sulfur dioxide can lead to acid rain whereas CO2 leads to Global warming. Okay, so here's how a coal, oil and gas power station work. Well, you've got your fuel here. So in this case it's coal, but it could be oil or gas. Now the coal uh, is burnt. And when it's burnt, the chemical energy in the fuel is converted into heat energy. Water is pumped in through the boiler... And as it's pumped in, it gets converted into steam. So, so here we had chemical energy. Here it gets converted into heat energy. The heat energy gets converted into kinetic energy in the steam. Steam goes round, and here we've got a turbine. And as the steam goes past the turbine, it causes it to turn inside the turbine. And therefore, in the generator, electricity gets generated, and the electricity goes off to the national grid. Okay, finally, we're talking about nuclear power. Now, the advantages of nuclear power is for the amount of fuel you use, a lot of electricity can be produced. Now, disadvantages to nuclear. Uh, the radioactive waste takes many thousands of years to decay. And also, they're ex very expensive to decommission. So at the end of the life of a nuclear power station, it costs a lot of money to take the nuclear power station apart. So it costs a lot of money to decommission the power station. Okay, so this is a diagram of how a nuclear power station works. Now, it works very, very sim similarly to a coal, oil, and gas power station, uh, except for instead of burning a fuel, here uh, inside the containment structure, uh, th these rods here are heated due to the fact that there's nuclear fission going on inside here uh, with uranium. The heat gets transferred into the water here, and the water, uh, it's going to uh, turn into steam. So here the water gets turned into steam. And then just like the coal, oil and gas power stations, that turns a turbine here. The turbine turns a generator and then that produces electricity. 
and the rest of the water gets recycled back ground.